Hey everyone. Today, I'm gonna to give you a tour of my home, Serendipity. I'm gonna show you every room and then we're gonna do a little quick tour outside. I hope you enjoy it. It's been much requested and uh, much delayed. So let's go. The first thing you're gonna see when you walk into the house is a front entry closet. So many tiny houses I see do not have front entry closets. Now that probably works fine if you are in a, a really mild climate where you only have one season, summer. But I live in Alberta, Canada, and we have, well, we have two seasons. Winter, winter, winter and construction. That's the joke. But we actually have all four seasons, so we need a place for everything. So I made sure to build in a front entry closet so that I have room for my boots, mitts, toques, Yes, I live in Canada, they're called toques, uh, for winter and winter coats. And in the summertime, you know, just jackets and, and flip-flops and sandals. And on this side, I keep my long dresses because my closet, I have a huge closet as you will see, but it's not really tall. I just use this side for my long dresses, but a front entry closet, definitely a must when you live in a climate like I do. So then you are in my living room. Normally there is a cat sitting in this exact spot. <laughs> I do have two cushions and it looks really nice when I have a cushion on that side of the couch, but there's really no point because that's my big tiny house cat's spot. I found a love seat to fit this space and it works out perfectly. I have a little ottoman here that's got storage underneath, which is uh, great. And this little coffee table is actually a stool that my older son made and is one of the only things I brought from my condo when I sold and built the tiny house. But it is perfect as a coffee table for my living room. This is my living room. I have this great little spot to store my ladder for the loft. I don't use the loft right now. It's just extra space. It's really just a guest room or storage if I need it. There's a little cleat here that holds it in. And when I want to go up to the loft, I just pull it out and bring it over, hook it on, and I can go up into my loft. The loft is the full length of the kitchen. I wanted awning windows for both my windows, but we needed one window to be an egress window. So the window on that side is a slider, and the window on this side is an awning. And I keep this one open because it gives a really nice bit of air circulation, and it doesn't matter if it rains because it's an awning window and nothing comes in. Over here, you'll see the little opening that I cut so that the cat can get through and doesn't have to come through the closet. I wanted an opening from my closet into the loft so that I could slide bedding through and just another way to get in here. I had this idea that I would find a pitcher that was the same opening and put some hinges on it and have a secret door to my closet. And I managed to find a pitcher and I have a little hook on here. I had Velcro but it didn't take the cat long to figure out that she could pull the Velcro and get that sucker open. As I said, I don't use this space right now. I'm glad I built the loft though, because what it does is gives me options. I almost forgot to show you the entertainment side of my living room. I have my smart TV and I have my electric fireplace, which is also a heater. Sometimes in the winter, you don't want to heat up the whole house, but you just want a little something warmer while you're sitting in here watching TV. When I was designing my tiny house, I had three things that were a priority for me. And one of those things was a great big kitchen because I love to cook. I'm Portuguese, so I am always trying to feed everybody. If you're happy, I'll make you something to eat. Are you sad? I'm gonna make you something to eat. Sick? Let me make you something to eat. Bored? Let's, let's make something to eat. It's just in my genetics. I love to have my kids over for meals and I did not want that to end just because I was in a small space. So I have a great big kitchen. One of the really cool things that my builder incorporated into my kitchen was this little secret door here so that I could get to the things that are in this corner cupboard. And all we do is just pop that open and now I can get to the things that I don't use that often. As you can see, I have way more crap than I need. So this little door is really incredible and I would recommend it to anybody who's building a kitchen with big corners. I do have a stove with an oven. Now it's smaller than standard. So I had to actually buy a new pizza pan that would fit in there, but it fits a full size cookie sheet. You just have to put it in this way versus wide. Gas stove. One thing I do kind of wish I had put in was a convection oven. 
when I was building my house, I went nine and a half feet wide versus the standard eight and a half feet wide. So that means when I move my house, I need a wide load permit because it's wider than street legal, but I don't need guide cars or anything like that. That extra foot of width in the house allowed me to have a much bigger kitchen and allowed me to have the set of drawers here and still have enough walkway. This is the utensil drawer. I, these two drawers are my pot drawers. So my frying pans and my pots are all in drawers. Then there's the corner cabinet that we saw on the other side. Another thing that a lot of people don't think about when they're building tiny houses is where are they gonna put their garbage and where are they gonna put their recycling? And I have that built into the tiny house. I, I'll, I'll be fully transparent. I didn't think about it either but luckily I was working with a builder who knew what she was doing. So she made sure to put that in. And then I just have my cutlery here. Um, and then under the sink, just the usual stuff. One of my favorite things about my tiny house is my farmhouse style sink, which is just from Ikea. It's huge. This little tray fits in there perfectly for just drying small things. When I'm doing a big load, I bring out a mat. I love having a window here. It allows so much fresh air and light in. And um, as you'll see, my plants just love the amount of light in the tiny house. One of the things that I knew when I was designing my tiny house was that I did not want uppers in my kitchen because I had seen a lot of videos. Whenever I saw a tiny house that had upper cabinets, to me, it felt like it closed in the kitchen. I wanted to have it open and I always knew that I was gonna get a shelf built for here. I have a friend who is a craftsman carpenter and he built me this shelf. We did a little field trip to the, the lumber store and found this beautiful walnut. And he built me a shelf for, with a plate rack for my Fiesta Ware plates and my microwave. It just allows me to not only have really functional storage, but beautiful storage. And it allows my dishes to sort of be part of the decor um, with the colors and everything, which I really love. I wanted a space for my other kitchen appliances because I use my Instant Pot at least once a week. I use my air fryer regularly as well and my Vitamix blender. This cabinet here takes care of all of that. It allows me to have my big heavy appliances easily accessible but tucked away when I'm not using them. Just have a look at this. Slick that is. <laughs> now that my friend is called professional build. <laughs> Another thing that I really wanted in the tiny house was a big fridge. Now this fridge is narrower than standard but it's taller first of all it's got the freezer on the bottom with what I, which i wanted with drawers you know you go into the fridge more often than the freezer so having the freezer at the bottom just makes so much sense and then as you can see it's full i'm a little embarrassed by that but you know lots of storage a full-size fridge is definitely the way to go and i keep my my cookie sheets and everything just up top there that's just a nice uh handy little spot that i found for it I will say that one of the things we made sure to build in was a venting fan and tiny houses, any small space, whether it's camper or tiny house, moisture is your biggest enemy. And so when you're cooking, obviously you're releasing a lot of moisture. It really makes sense to have a hood fan because also when you're cooking, you want the smells to, to get out of the house. It's a very small space. So uh, definitely a good idea. Another thing that I wanted in my kitchen was a little eating bar, but I didn't want the builder to put it in. I, there were some things I wanted to do in the house myself, just to sort of give it my stamp. And this was something I knew I could manage. Now, right now, the top is just painted wood, but eventually I'm gonna find a beautiful piece of live edge, hopefully walnut or some sort of wood that I'll get my carpenter friend to stain and finish and that will go here when i'm not using it these brackets that i bought are really handy because they just come down and then when you want it again you just flip it up and i'm quite proud of it it's not like it was hard <laughs> i'm making it sound like a cured cancer or something like that a built-in eating bar it gives me another place to to sit and eat it gives me another place to work sometimes i put my makeup mirror here and i do my makeup because of the natural light um, and it's just great because you have this nice breeze coming through. As you saw, I have a cat. And originally, I had planned on having the cat litter box in a space in the bathroom that I ended up having to use for a hot water tank. So the cat litter box is now 
out. And I have it right here underneath my desk. You may be wondering, does it smell? It doesn't because what I use are uh, crushed walnut shells. There's no smell and very little dust. She still tracks out some of the litter because for some reason she has to launch herself out of a cat litter box. If you have a cat, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I have this little mat here that catches some of the litter. I vacuum every day anyways with my Dyson. So this works out perfectly. No smell, really convenient. I keep her food dish here as well. So next, my home office. I told you that I had three priorities when I was designing the tiny house. The first was the kitchen, the big kitchen. The second was a home office because I work from home three days a week before the pandemic and now I'm full-time from home and that will continue even after things return back to whatever normal is going to look like. And this space is awesome. Uh, we built in this little desk and when we were doing the design I was picturing having my laptop here and some files and I thought well this isn't really going to be long enough, deep enough, but we didn't want to close off this walkway. So what they did was they just put this little lip here that comes with some sliders. And now when I have my other monitor set up here and my laptop and my files, I have tons of room. So I made sure to build in a space for my files and my printer. My printer sits under here with some files. I also have a drawer here that I keep my files, my wireless keyboard and mouse when I'm not working. If you're going to work from home, Making a priority of building in a dedicated workspace is such a good idea because it means that not only do you have a place where you can leave your stuff during the work week out and it's not interfering with your day to day, but on the weekend you can tuck everything away and there's not this visual clutter. I love that there's a window here so I can look outside and see the birds fighting over the bird feeder uh, and the squirrels trying to steal the bird seed. I knew I wanted a dedicated pantry for my food and lots of storage space. So we have a pantry here and it holds so much. It's not super deep, eight or 10 inches deep, but it holds spices and tin goods, just so much fits in here. So this cupboard is really great. And then on this side, I also have storage. This is storage for more cookbooks and things like that. But on this side, I also, I have more food. <laughs> You're probably thinking, how much more food can she have in a house? Lots. I have lots of food. I keep my baking uh, tins and flowers and everything in here. Having dedicated pantry space means that I don't have to have food in my kitchen other than what's in the jars on that shelf. Because I went an extra foot wider, I was able to fit in the desk space, this huge cupboard, and also um, just behind the camera is where my furnace is and above that is a false floor and then extra storage space where I keep my sewing machine, my toolbox, my work backpack, just extra big things. My steps up to the bedroom are storage stairs and I love them. I don't know how many more times I can say in one video that I love something, but I love these storage steps. I keep my bedding in this top one and then I have on the bottom one, I have cat food and cat litter. They just store so many things because I don't have a basement. I don't have an attic. I don't have a, a spare room to shove shit in. I don't have a garage. Everything that needs to be in the house that needs to be stored gets stored in here. My extra toilet paper, my extra paper towels. It's really great about these is that each step goes right back to the beginning of the gooseneck. So that bottom step is this deep and there's so much room to put everything. Uh, in fact, they're half empty. The, this one here is got my bedding and it's full, but other than the bottom one with the cat litter and the cat food and extra toilet paper and such, they're, they're half empty. I did do a video about reorganizing and clearing out my storage steps because when I moved into the house, I did sort of just cram them full of stuff that I didn't really know where to put. And that was because I was emptying out my storage unit and I brought things into the house that really didn't need to be here. I pulled everything out and then only put back what I actually wanted to keep and that was really only a third. Storage steps, love those. So next, let's look at the bathroom. I have a very small bathroom, which is exactly what I wanted. I have an RV size tub 
which uh, I get teased about quite a bit, but it works just fine. I can have a bath in there. I have tried it just to prove that I can. I mostly shower anyways. So um, I love it and it works well. And really that's all there is to it. I have a flush toilet. Now I had planned on having a compost toilet, but when I found my parking spot here in the city, I knew that there was no way they were gonna go for a compost toilet. I had always planned to run the plumbing for a flush toilet and then just have the compost toilet sit on top. And I wanted to do that because I knew that would give me the most options down the road. If I move and I'm off grid, I'll just switch it out. Another one of my favorite things, my washer dryer combo unit. It does very small loads. When the world isn't in lockdown, I take my bedding to the laundromat in the neighborhood, which is you know super fast and really cheap. But, you know, during Corona Geddon, being able to wash my clothes at home was really great because the laundromat was closed. Because the sink is on top, it's a little high and I do have to get up on my tippy toes to wash my face, but that's really a minor inconvenience to have one on top of the other. And I wanted it this way because I wanted this space under here to be for the cat litter box. There was going to be a little opening there and her litter box was going to be tucked away. When I moved into this spot and we realized that I couldn't have propane appliances, we had to come up with an, another solution because the on-demand tankless hot water tank that I was going to have in the house was propane. And we couldn't find one that was electric that would work on the amperage of the house, which is 50 amp service. Under here is a 60 gallon hot water tank. It fits in there perfectly. This door pops open, this actually lifts up as well so you can get at it. The plumbing for the sink is over here and they left this open for me so that I could put my makeup and my towels and everything. Every little spot that they could build in storage, I asked them to and they did a great job of finding it. Having a fan in your bathroom is another really important thing because in the winter, you don't want that window open when you come out of the shower. And this really is, I think, uh, a non-negotiable when you're putting a bathroom in your tiny house. Welcome to my bedroom. <laughs> the third priority I had when I was designing my tiny house was a bedroom I could stand up in. I am too old to crawl up into a loft every night for bed and I wanted a bedroom that I could stand up in and I could walk around my bed to make it. And this room allows me to do that. So I'm 5'4", and yes, on this side, because of the slant of the roof, I'm, hit, I'm touching the ceiling. The bed is from Ikea, and I had it delivered to Teacup in Lethbridge, and they built it. And one of the things I love about this bed is that it's a storage bed, and so I lift it up and have room under there for my winter clothes, winter boots, my drying rack for when I do my laundry, my big duvet, so much storage. I have my luggage in there. But having that space is really handy because it's, it's wasted space otherwise and it allows me to store so many things. People say all the time, well, you, you, you can't own a lot of clothes when you live in a tiny house. You can't have a big closet. Oh, I've got a big closet. Let me show you my closet. Just really quickly, I have this little table here that I have my TV on, which is awesome. I have an Apple TV, so when I'm in bed, I can watch TV. It's tiny, but that's okay. I'm not that far from it. I w wanted a full-length mirror in my tiny house. I think you should always have a full-length mirror to see what's happening back there. They custom-built this, this door for me, and uh, inside is my crawl-in closet. This closet goes all the way to the back wall of the loft and it's huge there's a this rod goes all the way to the back so I keep the things that I'm currently using at the front and then the you know winter stuff that I don't want under the bed goes back there I have some drawer units for my t-shirts and yoga gear workout gear and a shelf for my jeans I mean this is a ton of space literally you could have somebody sleep in here. And if I want to get up here to crawl to the back, I just have a little stool and I step up and I, I crawl up there. One of the things that I knew I wanted was a Dyson 
cordless vacuum. And I have the charging unit for it in here. So it's tucked out of the way. And you know, that was a smart thing to do. I also have behind my drawer unit, my electrical panel. It's huge. I mean, this closet is bigger than the one I had at home. It's not as tall. This is the biggest closet I've ever had. And literally, like I said, you could have somebody sleeping in here. Because of that opening that we put in, I can actually crawl through here into the loft. The floor of my closet is the roof of the bathroom. As you can see, I have so much storage. I have under the bed, I have this huge closet, I have the loft, I have the storage steps. Like there's so much storage and we haven't even looked at my shed that I built underneath the gooseneck of the trailer yet. The bedroom has two great big windows. And again, I wanted two awning windows, but for egress, for safety, because my builder builds to code, um, I had to have one that wasn't an awning. So that one is the egress window. And then on that side, I have the awning window. And we have had some really, really hot days. And because I keep both windows open, I have so much nice air circulation through here that I am perfectly cool. So this beam is the one thing I've had to get used to in my tiny house because I smacked my head on this, or at least I did when I first moved in. But I'm a slow learner, so I had to do it a few more times after that until I remembered. Now I'm really good at not smacking my head on it. But you know what? It's structural. It means that my tiny house has been really secure, even though we've had huge winds and tornado warnings because the weather's just been crazy. My house has not moved and I feel very secure. Um, yeah, but you do have to sort of watch that. This little thing here doesn't look like much, but it's actually one of the more important things that uh, was built into the house. And it's a Lunos air exchange system. There's one here, there's one above the front entry closet and they cycle every 60 seconds. This one will be either be pulling air in and that one will be pushing air out or they'll reverse every 60 seconds. You can set this to sensor how much moisture is in the air or different levels um, and it works really well. It was expensive to put in but I would not have built a house without it, not a tiny house. One of the biggest enemies in your tiny house is moisture. And you do want, you know, to be sure that you have good air circulation because in the winter when you don't have your windows open, you know, the house is built so well and it's spray foam insulation that it's pretty airtight. So this makes sure that I'm getting fresh air in and recirculating and keeping the moisture content down. I just want to point out my little bedside lights that I made. These are actually candle holders. There was a little base on there and I'd seen these candles with these cages on Pinterest. And I'm like, well, I could probably do that. So I bought the cord and the, the little shelf bracket from Ikea. I'm probably way more proud of than I should be, <laughs> but I'm quite proud of them. I think they're quite nice. My builder had a really great idea because I have a lot of books. So she was the one who suggested leaving this open instead of cladding this side of it. And now it becomes my bookshelf. It also is the spot that Sophie uses to get in and out. She's got her little cushion here with her fake lamb's wool blankie on top of it. My house's name is Serendipity and my builder had this laser cut for me, which I really love. Um, and this window just, it doesn't open, but it gives me a lot of light. Uh, I only kept a couple of paintings from my original, my condo. This is one of them. And this is the really the only wall space for a big painting. I have a couple of pictures of my kids when they were little and some family photos, but this little, it's sort of like a little bookshelf gallery space. I quite like it. I'll change it around a bit and add some more pictures as time goes by, but. So that's pretty much the inside of the house. So we're just gonna do a quick walk around on the outside. I'm gonna show you the shed underneath the gooseneck, which I'm quite proud of. I think that was a really good use of space. And then we'll be done with the house tour. So let's go look at the gooseneck a part of the trailer. One of the things that allowed me to have that stand-up bedroom was having the gooseneck trailer because I knew that that would give me uh, enough height. It also meant that I had all this space underneath the gooseneck that I had the opportunity to do something with. When I had my carpenter do my front step and do my skirting for the house, 
he also uh, was able to side the shed with the same siding and have it fit in seamlessly. This is my shed. You can see the gooseneck part of the trailer. The hitch came off and it's actually slid underneath the trailer. There's so much room in here. I have room for my bike back there, some extra chairs, my lawnmower, my winter tires. One of the things that I made sure to put under the gooseneck was a plug-in, which allows me to plug in my trouble light or, you know, if you're in here doing some stuff in the winter or at night, you need to be able to see what you're doing. This shed actually can be disassembled, including the floor and reassembled at a new spot. The trailer manufacturer is CJ Trailers. It's two by four construction, so it's heavy. She's 37 feet long, nine and a half feet wide. So you want a trailer that can take that kind of weight, not just sitting still, but moving down the highway. Now, I'm not gonna move my house very often, but when it goes, I want her to be nice and stable. And having a trailer that's custom built for a tiny house for your your layout is really important. So that's the space underneath the gooseneck. It's really useful. I just wanna point out the vents that we put in. So there's two vents on this side, two on the other side, and underneath, inside the shed, underneath the gooseneck, it's open to the shed. And this is all to allow a lot of ventilation under there. You don't want moisture building up underneath your trailer. There's the vent for my, my furnace. The awning above the door, Actually, the bracket undoes and it flips down for transport. The light comes off and it flips down for transport. But when you're parked, because the door opens outwards, and if it's raining and snowing, then that's gonna get all over your door and inside your house, most doors open in. Having something, an, a little awning there that's built in is really handy. That is the tour of the tiny house. I hope you liked it. I hope you found it useful. <laughs> I'm sorry it took so long. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. It would be awesome if you would give it a thumbs up if you like the video and subscribe if you haven't and be part of my family. I will talk to you next time. Let's try that again. Get in there, you son of a bitch. <laughs>